here on stage two, it's time for our next panel discussion, uh, the Financial Services and Procurement Forum. Uh, we're going to be looking at accelerating virtual cards for procurement management. So let's meet our guests. Uh, and remember, you can see their full bios through the event app. Uh, our guests are Chad Wallace, who's Global Head of Commercial Solutions at MasterCard, and uh, Rajiv Ramachandran, who's Senior Vice President, Product Strategy and Management, Cooper Pay at Cooper Software. Welcome, Chad. Welcome, Rajiv. Hey, Sean. How are you? Hey, Chad. Delighted to, to, have, uh, to have you with us here today. Um, now, maybe we'll just start off, gents, by um, one of you perhaps just taking on a, a quick summary uh, uh, for those who are familiar, unfamiliar, I mean, with, uh, with virtual cards and um, what they are and uh, what their role is in uh, modern procurement practices. Yeah, I'm happy to kick us off. Thank uh, so, and thank you for having us on. Uh, very we're welcome. To be here, Rajiv, great to see you again. Great uh, and uh, so the, the aspects of virtual card, I'd love to spend just a few minutes talking about that. I think it's an important aspect of the procurement program. And MasterCard has built products and services in order to facilitate these types of transactions in uh, the virtual card use cases. And we work closely with procure to pay platforms and banks and FinTech partners to be able to offer these types of services and products to our customers. Um, but essentially a, a virtual card is a 16 digit card number that's issued at the time of the transaction. And it has certain controls on that that allow security uh, trust around that transaction, the ability to dispute that transaction. So we have really strong and robust ways that we offer these types of credit card products in a very secured and controlled manner to be able to embed that in the procurement process. And what we've seen is many corporates are interested in using those capabilities in order to manage their working capital better, uh, leverage their uh, payment process and make sure that they've integrated that and then look at the real, the deep reconciliation data that we can provide as part of that. And, and I think, that, yeah, no, I think Chad summarized it perfectly. I would say one key thing uh, at the end he mentioned is very important for enterprises, which is reconciliation and, and virtual cards as a payment instrument, in addition to the control and security allow allow people to see transactions that is purchase orders invoices typically what procurement teams ap teams deal with associated with that payment instrument and that makes reconciliation of your books your integration with your erp and and managing your liability and all your transactions in your be much much more simpler so so really a valuable instrument in the payment world and mm -hmm. And I think you're seeing a lot of lot of adoption from customers, enterprises starting to embrace the value of it in the supply chain. So I wonder if we could explore that value a little bit deeper, uh, gents. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned, a, you know, uh, one benefit of using virtual cards from a procurement management perspective there. What what other benefits are there, um, Rajiv? If I, if, I, if I take the macro view, Sean, I, I look at, you know, three or four different use cases that are very, very applicable for an enterprise. And we touched on the first one. We said procurement, right? Purchasing and ability to purchase both through platforms like Coupa integrating with your suppliers or even your ability to purchase in brick and mortar stores where you can walk in and use tap to pay capabilities in today's world are instrumental in this use case. But what is equally important is you're not just going there and spending you're spending with controls, controls that are approved for you to spend in your enterprise and controls that allow budget management, controls that allow the right use of those cards in right places, right? That's procurement. You take that to the next step with AP and accounts payable has the same use case where upon an approved invoice, when they want to make payments to those suppliers, the same instrument can be used. And now you're talking about, you know, batching, thousands of invoices into a single payment and making a payment with a virtual card that lets you provide detailed remittance information and even straight through processing. I mean, Chad and I have worked on 
many projects between Coupa and MasterCard where we look at this whole ecosystem end to end, all the way from initiating a card, processing a card, all the way to the bank account of the merchant. And the third use case that we should all be talking about is travel, right? I mean, think about all of us going out there. We are traveling. We have flights that we book. We go to hotels. We have incidentals like, you know, you're, you're traveling, you're taking a taxi or Uber, right? You're going to a restaurant, having a dinner with a team. Each of these requires them to happen. And this instrument, a payment instrument, a virtual card, brings that same control and ease of use to all of us as individuals as well. I mean, we are all used to this in our personal life, right? I mean, we take our card, take a picture of it, put it into Apple, Apple Pay, and we are able to make our payments. Same thing, corporate virtual card tokens can be integrated similarly with within Cooper MasterCard, our discussions around how we can bring it into wallets, digital wallets, and allow an end user experience. So big picture wise, you can take all those use cases, Sean, procurement, AP, travel and expense, and virtual card as an instrument across all of them. And uh, Chad, anything to add? You know, I would say in addition to that, we've also seen some really interesting use cases in the human resources space. Uh, and so you can think you've got a large intern program coming in for the next year. People need to be interviewed. Uh, during that interview process, we often, bank, you know, many companies will have the intern expense that on their personal card and then have to submit an expense report in order to get a refund. What? We don't need to do that. We can actually issue a token to the device. We can allow that intern to come in for their interview, use that for travel purposes, and then that's automatically reconciled in the book. And so we've been spending some time with many HR, uh, heads of HRs at various different companies talking about that use case as well. So industry specific use cases, accounts payable, procurement, travel, insurance and healthcare, another one that we've been seeing quite a bit of uptick in as well. So very industry specific use cases, but all focused on working capital and the payment benefits around that. So, and um, yeah, go ahead. sorry, Rajiv. No, I was saying not to forget, like Chad said, the use cases expand even into our government sector where the focus is on spend control and states, you know, local governments and even the federal government looking at this as an instrument which can help streamline that process. So definitely use cases beyond, you know, just corporates, but also into, you know, city, state, and federal governments uh, around this payment instrument. Uh, now, I'm interested to know, you know, for companies who maybe aren't uh, massively, you know, down, far down the road on their um, transformation journeys, can they, integrate virtual cards into their existing you know workflows um i mean how much technology do you need to to be able to leverage these advantages uh, if you haven't got much you know implementation of technology and digital you know in your workflows happy to, happy to start on that one um yeah. and so you know taking a giant step back MasterCard is very focused on product innovation and having best in class technology to deliver to our partners. Secondarily, inclusion, we are a very open network. And so we have partners that are banks, we have partners that are technology companies, we have partners that are fintechs, but our goal is to take those products and integrate them into our open network and be able to provide that embedded financial services experience for our customers. And the last piece is really around trust and security. And the trust and security uh, part, the core of the virtual card is based on trust and security. Create that 16 digit account number, use it for very specific transactions. So we can narrow it down to transaction type. We can narrow it down to the place of where that's going to be used, the amount that's going to be used, the time frame in which that transaction is available, that card is available. And that gives you the, the, the overall aspect of being able to leverage those three within the virtual card. At MasterCard, we've been very uh, partner driven. Uh, we have our relationship with Coupa where we've gone and pre-integrated our virtual card product into the ecosystem and thought about in the workflow where people need to pay, how do we present our options right there? And then working with our partner banks to be able to access those because our banks are the key component of the, the credit underwriting that happens within this process. Absolutely. And, and Sean, th that's exactly how we look at it, right? I mean, we are a business spend management platform. Corporates use Coupa as a platform where buying happens. 
truly they go into the Coupa platform, search for what they have to buy, check out and, and go and make that transaction complete. This is where invoicing and AP happens. To Chad's point, that's exactly where we see the fit for Coupa as a platform because we are in the flow. We manage the entire requisition to purchase order, to goods received, to invoice flow that happens in every enterprise and payments is a key part of that. Bringing that payment experience right where that transaction happens is what customers want. And they want it so that they don't have to go and build all this. I mean, one of the challenges that you can see when you talk to customers is it's a it's an investment, IT investment, capital that they have to do if they have to do all this themselves. And that's where Coupa as a platform provides that seamless experience right inside of the platform. And to Chad's point, working with MasterCard, working with the issuing banks that are on the MasterCard network, you've been able to bring a global set of banks worldwide. Right, all the major banking institutions partnering with MasterCard into this ecosystem so that for our customers, it has become configuration driven. Configuration, they configure you know, which bank that they want to integrate with and Coupa and MasterCard complete that process integration for them. The data flows seamlessly from Coupa through the MasterCard network to the supplier, back through the network, back to the corporate where reconciliation happens. Th that's really where innovation is happening. That's really where innovation is happening. And this is what customers were looking for. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a joke. I mean, not too long ago, we were called the procure to okay to pay platforms, right? Where payments were not part of the core workflow. And we used to joke about that. And over the last six, seven years, I think Chad, you would remember this, where we started this journey of bringing payments into platforms and MasterCard took a lead role working with Tupa on this. We were able to streamline that process of payments inside, inside the platform. And that's been, a huge, huge value add for our customers. And, and that's really where the adoption started growing. That's really where the control started happening. And that's really where people started to say, this is valuable, right? I mean, we haven't talked about all the different use cases of value there, but I'm just saying that happening in one place, in one view, you know, across your requisitioning, purchasing, invoicing, payments process is extremely critical, extremely critical. And that's, that's what we've been able to achieve. And does the size of a company, the scale of a company, have any bearing at all on the benefits that that company can experience from, um, you know, um, going down the, the road of virtual cards? Um, I'll put that one to you, Rajiv. I would say we have seen enterprises across all sizes, large, medium and small, all benefit, all benefit, because this is a universal use case. If you look at it, people buy stuff in the corporate world, right? Whether it's payments that you have to make for simple things like your subscription software, whether if you're buying things like you're bringing an employee, you have to buy a laptop, right? You're buying things for your, your, you know, your office supply, right? I mean, the use cases are so horizontal and you have ability to use it from a small business to medium to large business. And each one of them streamlines this process slightly differently based on their own needs. But truly, Sean, the value is across. And, and I think Chad mentioned this, I'll repeat it. Think of this also as a great working capital tool on both sides of the, of the ecosystem, both for the buying community and for the supplier community. For the supplier community, we are talking about card at the time of purchase. In the B2B world, that's eliminating a net 60 payment term and bringing a payment instrument at the time of purchase, unheard of. Right. I mean, that's the best practice that we always talk to our customers. We tell them, hey, look, you've got to think. And, and I think even your previous guest, I was listening about risk and, you know, uh, resiliency on the supply chain. It's it's a relationship for our customers between them and their supply chain. And you want to make it a healthy supply chain. You want to offer them working capital solutions. And virtual cards is a great way to make that payment early and offer that working capital for your suppliers. On the buyer side, it also allows you to extend your DPO because you have your terms with your bank and you're paying your bank after a particular period of time, whatever you agreed with your bank. So it's a tool for So that benefit of virtual cards being a working capital tool, sometimes, Chad, you would agree. We don't talk about it a lot, but honestly, it's a huge value add, working capital value add for both buyers and suppliers. Yeah, completely agree. And you think about the majority of either buyers and suppliers are not the same size. Large buyer could be paying a small a small business, a small business could be paying a large buyer, a large buyer could be paying a 
large supplier, a small supplier could be paying a small supplier. And so you see use cases happening across the ecosystem in that way where businesses need to be able to transact with each other regardless of size and giving them the tools and capabilities to be able to do that in a way that's standardized. The data is standardized as well. So when you think about the transactions that we offer on our network, we have the ability to be able to pass quite a bit of data. And so we mentioned the reconciliation point earlier, and we spend quite a bit of time integrating on the, even on the accounts receivable side to make sure that the data that's on our network that's passed across is integrated, available for that reconciliation purpose. And the goal there is to really make the life of the accounts receivable team much easier. Be passing that data through, being able to match the payments that are coming in and being able to uh, understand exactly what their incoming receivables are. Uh, yeah. uh, you mentioned to uh, Rajiv earlier that you know the the cost of implementing um, these processes was a barrier in some instances. Uh, what other barriers to the implementation of virtual cards do you tend to come across? Um, well, maybe I'll put that to you first, Chad. Yeah, well, so I would say uh, there are certainly um, times where we see customers question, you know, how much is this going to cost? Uh, why is this different than an ACH or a wire transfer? What are the benefits around that? And what we've been able to do is build a set of products here at MasterCard that help articulate the value that you would end up having with a procurement program that's based on card. Uh, MasterCard's own procurement process is very based on paying our suppliers with a card program. It provides us excellent working capital benefits. Um, we have a team of people that are focused on contacting our suppliers, being able to set them up, get them enabled for the card product, make sure that they're accepting the card product, and then we negotiate those terms as part of that through the process. Often when we take a look at the cost of being able to move money, especially cross-border, um, pretty similar. I mean, you get the working capital benefit. Uh, there is a, a, a small cost to the supplier for the transaction itself. But ultimately, at the end of the day, moving money across the globe, you know, it's pretty similar as far as the economics are concerned. And often, you know, when we go and do show the customers their uh, spend reports that we can pull by taking a look at their accounts payable file, parsing that information out, information out and coming up with the recommendations, um, often people will be very excited about the benefits overall. No, I agree. And, and, and Sean, if you look at it, we bucket it into three areas, right? Like I said, change management. Look, I mean, it's a change. There's a change to the payment process. There's a change to the data that's coming in, right? So it is a change management. But what we have been able to do with our pre-integrated solution is to reduce the friction for our customers from the change management standpoint. Like I said, as a platform, we give it fully integrated so that they reduce costs to any of the bills that they need to do. We support them with the process change. I think Chad brought up a great point. I want to reiterate that. Communicating with the suppliers the value of this, you know, reaching out to them, explaining to them to the value, allowing them to understand the benefits that they're going to get. This is what teams at Coop and MasterCard do to support our customers in this change management. And that messaging should be clear, right? We always say this very clearly. You cannot, uh, and, I, and I, I maybe I'll reuse the code that means that you can't go at midnight and say, knock on the door of your neighbor. That's what he said. Same thing. You can't just go to a supplier one fine day and say, I want to change everything on you. You've got to show them the value. And, and I think that's what we do, right? We are getting them paid early, right? That gives them the working capital benefits. Why, right? The why the change? And I think these are the kind of things that help overcome the challenges. The messaging, the supplier enablement, the overcoming the change management, whether it be on the payment standpoint or on the IT integration standpoint. I think these are the places where we work hand in hand with our customers. And look, I'll also, you know, use a quote from one of the customers I heard recently. They said, you know, the best results come from teams, teams that are bold and ambitious. And that's honestly what we have seen. This is a first people driven initiative as much as it's a platform driven initiative. And, and we have seen customers where both the platform and the people, uh, great teams, great teams, chief procurement officers, head of accounts payable, you know, head of, you know, supplier enablement, you know, and their teams working together with us, with MasterCard, with Cooper, with their issuing bank. That's how you overcome these challenges and, and tremendous amount of success, tremendous amount of success as people start to understand the value, seeing tremendous amount of success in overcoming these challenges. Um, and, and that's that's the real deal. 
And uh, I mean, uh, any kind of progress, uh, technological in particular, it offers a whole welter of advantages, doesn't it? But uh, or sometimes the traditional way of doing things also has uh, its plus points and its advantages. What are there any advantages to the traditional ways of, uh, you know, um, using cards in a pr procurement perspective that? You know the technology finds harder to to mimic and improve upon than other aspects. I don't know who to put that to. Who would like to take that first? I'll start with my thoughts on that. Okay. Right. The way the way we look at it is the payment ecosystem has to be flexible. We're not saying this is the only one payment instrument that's going to be there. Right. We have to support traditional ACH payment. We have to support global local payments, whether it's SEPA, whether it's BAX. Right. We're talking about cross border payments. We're talking about even checks. Let's face it still happens uh, in the United States. So you're not talking about going and saying that every payment goes away and this is the only form of payment. That's wrong. There are right use cases for these right payments. However, having said that, we bring the value of this payment instrument and why it's unique and where it helps. And that's how adoption needs to be thought. Through. For example, when you give a full card details to any of your beneficiaries, you're exposed to that entire credit line. With a virtual card, you're only giving them a piece of it. So you can have a million dollar credit line, but with a virtual card, you're giving them just $100. So security and controls, way, way more better, way, way more better than a, a traditional card. Same thing with same thing with um, your flexibility on how long the card is valid. In a traditional card, it's open for three years, two years, whatever your expiration is. Very flexible way on virtual cards, you can say, for this merchant, I want to keep it open for 30 days. For this merchant, I want to keep it open for 60 days. So security and fraud becomes a way, way more valuable instrument with, with virtual cards, right? You're you're eliminating a lot of plastic, let's face it. I mean, and when we are talking about supply chain, when we are talking about you know what we want to do together as a community, when we are talking about you know getting into our goals for environment and social goals i mean like it's it's a great way to bring a digital form factor into a payment and eliminate people walking around with plastic cards but give them the same flexibility with tap to pay and go and execute your use cases so sean from that perspective that's how i think it's not a single thing that goes across and solves all your problems there will be other payment methods what customers want us to do is bring that into a single experience which we are doing but at the same time, highlight the value of this instrument where it's applicable and really give them, give them the benefit of using it. And, and keeping on the risk management topic, um, we see corporates across the globe getting attacked with business email compromise fraud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is they're receiving a notification from their supplier who's asking to change the way that they get paid, that they provide a different account number, they provide a different routing code. And then they enter that information into their supplier master of their ERP system. Uh, with a virtual card, though, you're essentially creating that payment method right at the time where that payment needs to be to, needs to happen. And then you have the ability for the supplier to be able to say, I want to accept that payment, which gives a lot of control to the process overall. And you're not giving out your traditional bank account number, which you know may be compromised at some point in the future. That's a good point. And uh, it's very interesting, Rajiv, when you mentioned earlier that, you know, the sustainability element to this, that if you can cut down on the, you know, the use of plastic. Uh, do, do either of you have any sort of ballpark figure on the amount of plastic that's involved in the production of physical cards? Uh, I, I don't have that off the top of my head, uh, but I will say our virtual card use cases are growing significantly much faster than our traditional business payments that are happening over over traditional plastic cards. So significant yeah. growth in the virtual card space. And, uh, you know, I mentioned that Rajiv mentioned the travel use case earlier. Yeah. Uh, we see quite a bit of online travel agencies going out and paying hotel chains, airlines through a B2B payment mechanism using our virtual card product. And uh, we've been very successful working with those online travel agencies to be able to automate the process, leverage that virtual account capability, virtual card capability, and be able to integrate that into their payment process overall. Yeah. And, and Sean, one more use case, and Chad will agree to this as well, from a sustainability standpoint, one of the other things that's also changing is stop printing and mailing paper checks and, and move your payment to virtual card. So that's another use case when it comes to sustainability and, and kind of improving 
you know, all of us together as a community, right? I mean, we are reducing paper checks. We are we are bringing virtual cards as a payment. And, you know, you talked about COVID in your last session. I was saying that was where customers saw it up front. They couldn't go to their office to print checks and pay their suppliers. They needed a digital instrument to pay, a secure digital instrument to pay. So again, like I said, and I think Chad repeated, like we agree, there are different instruments to payments. We'll support all of them, right? I mean, they're going to be there and we're going to support that. But this instrument brings value. It brings control. It brings security. And it helps with its digital form factor in, in ways that we believe are valuable for our entire community, the buyer community, the supplier community, and all of us who are solution providers to that community. We feel like it's, it's immensely valuable. So um, just to return to procurement, for a second, um, how would a procurement department measure the return on investment of this kind of technology? Where would you know what what would they be looking at? How could they measure it, uh, Rajiv? So in in Coupa, we we always say this um, in in no in no wrong way, but we say it's all about customer success, not satisfaction, right? We don't measure customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is very very difficult to measure. You measure success and success is measured on quantifiable metrics and we classify four different metrics four different metrics for customers on this program right so first we talk about efficiency metrics efficiency metrics could be hey how much am i reducing the time to process a payment right how much am i reducing my errors in payments happening how much am i reducing the time for reconciliation how much am I reducing the time to approve a payment? So a lot of efficiency metrics that we can measure in a quantifiable way within the platform. And as payments go through it, you can do that. One class of metrics is efficiency metrics. Second class of metrics is around control, fraud, and security. How much am I reducing my security and fraud incidents? How much am I reducing cases where you know I have to either repay the supplier or I have to come back and you know deal with use cases like Chad mentioned business email compromise and so on so security and fraud related control and finally this is an instrument where our customers their procurement and AP teams get the benefit of rebates just like we have in our personal lives right I mean we get rewards when we use the instrument and, and that's another uh, metric where you talk about you know, what is the capital? What is the value that you brought to your enterprise in real cash and business terms? And finally, the fourth category is your DPO metrics. DPO metrics are extremely important for a buyer from working capital standpoint. On the supplier side, a lot of working capital. Benefits. It's all about working capital to start with, right? I got paid early. I got paid 60 days early. I got paid 30 days early. It's all about working capital benefits. So these are the different classifications that we use, Sean, in terms of categories of metrics that our customers use. And we, in our platform, compute those and provide them with our leading indicators. We, we have a community dashboard where we show them, this is the leading plat the leading consumers who are using this correctly. This is the value that they're getting. And this is how you are compared to them. We do that in a very anonymized way to give them visibility into where they stand versus the rest of the community and, and it helps them understand how to optimize this. We give them recommendations. We give them smart changes that they can make their payment process. So this, this is an ongoing thing, right? This is an ongoing thing where you go through this journey over and over again and keep improving. But these metrics, very well-defined metrics are key for any customer success. And two, maybe two other points that I'll make on that similarly is uh, we see many corporates focus on, you know, maybe potentially thinking through their working capital benefits on strategic spend versus mid spend and then the tail spend. And, you know, the, the value here is you have the ability to tailor the way that you want to manage that spend in a way that maybe virtual cards are better used for certain use cases. Um, one of the things that MasterCard rolled out, a new product last year, uh, was a, a product that's designed to take a look at the invoice and ERP data to help make a recommendation of when to pay. And so Rajiv mentioned earlier, suppliers getting paid early, being able to take advantage of the fact that they're receiving their funds early. But yet that also means that the buyer is using their credit line to be able to make that payment earlier. And we have a piece of software that we've introduced and we're now working on integrating that with many partners that will allow that to happen in an automated fashion. And so we're really excited about that piece of technology and that's embedded into our virtual card capabilities. Thanks for that, Chad. Uh, so, I mean, these 
um, you know, technological solutions create data, whether well, they feed off data, but they also create data as well, don't they? And they give insight and visibility on various processes. Uh, what what are some of these insights? That are there any unexpected insights that procurement and other departments can draw for, from this kind of uh, technology and these kind of solutions that maybe weren't even part of the original, you know, idea? Rajiv, do you want to start? Uh, I, was, I was laughing at that because you said unexpected. And, you know, because of the data, we are actually able to track in real time or close to real time where the spend is actually happening. So we can actually see where the intended merchant for use was and sometimes people using it beyond where that intended use is. And so you have users getting into a state of behavior where they understand exactly how this can help. But you know, jokes aside, I think I think the the data insights. Uh, I think from from my standpoint, again going back to those metrics I said, uh, Sean, the the data associated with reconciliation, the data associated with efficiency, right, and the data associated with control and security and fraud. Those are the pieces where this has been extremely valuable, and it also brings from a compliance standpoint. Like Chad also mentioned, this is a global solution for us, and different markets require compliance requirements from a global standpoint like for example in europe you need to attach your tax receipts you need to bring that into this equation and because we are completely holding that ecosystem end to end we can notify users to bring that kind of experience in your mobile right you're just in your just like your personal world you get a notification you say hey you use this card attach your receipt so that your company can provide a compliance you know vat uh, uh, applicable invoice to the government authority so a lot of key areas where data from the transaction allows customers to gain insights into patterns of usage, patterns of efficiency, managing fraud, and actually even bringing compliance and, and better and better experiences to their end users. I, I think we have been extremely, extremely happy with this partnership with MasterCard, with all the issuing banks that we have had with Coupa and rolling this out to hundreds of customers, hundreds of customers, like you said, all different sizes and being able to see the value that they're getting out of it. It's been a it's been a great experience for us. And one additional item that we've been uh, looking at is when you think about the aspect of having a, uh, a specific transaction, let's use the travel use case. If you're sitting at a restaurant, you actually can see within our data the item level detail. And so if you want to set a policy around what someone can have at the restaurant as an employee, maybe your company doesn't prefer to have your employees to have an alcoholic beverage at dinner. Being able to have that control is an amazing aspect within the transaction flow and creates a really sophisticated t &E policy for these large corporates. I'm not sure everyone would agree with you there, though, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go gambling. Don't go to casinos. I know your virtual guards. Don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, on a more serious note, I mean, I mean, there is clearly a strong machine learning AI aspect to this. Where do you see that going? What 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 kind of functionality do you think the, these kind of solutions might be offering in five, ten years' time? Are you are you able to, you know, to to visualize that at all? I mean, I think it was kind of chat, yeah, and you can you can add to that. So, so Sean, I think the, the way we look at it is to your point earlier about data. We we look at we look at this at being a cloud platform. We have the we have the ability to look at this data across our customer community and our supplier community, and and it helps us derive patterns based on you know machine learning and AI capabilities, which tell us. Who are the kind of businesses who need what kind of payment methods and being able to smartly recommend to our buying community how to switch those payment methods in a secure way. Just to give you one example of how we have put AI to work, we actually fingerprint every transaction that goes through Coupa. It's a patent pending um, uh, uh, algorithm that we have come up with where we fingerprint uniquely each transaction that goes through Coupa and we use that to smartly recommend to other customers the valid use cases where they can use this payment method with a supply. And, and we are able to do that based on real time telling our customers in the community that this is a safe transaction. 
We have others in the community that have done this, and we know that this will not be a fraud scenario, right? So a lot of applicability where we can take data and, and really use it to identify from a fraud standpoint and also to smartly make recommendations to start customers using new payment methods. I, I think that's where we see a big use case. Obviously, bringing generative AI and its components into this is key, making it much more easier for our customers to understand and you know, interact with this in a much more user-friendly way. But I think the data that we have, roughly 4.6 trillion of spend has gone through the Cooper platform over the last 10 years, right? That's, that's been a, and that's an immense amount of data across close to 10 million suppliers. And it's this data that's helping us make these kind of recommendations, make these kind of you know, analysis possible. And I think that's going to be the future of how payments happen uh, in the B2B world. Fair, exactly the same mentality that we have at MasterCard, where we think about the data, we create models around the data to understand how we can make recommendations to customers. And I think the fraud case is a very good example of how within a specific transaction, within milliseconds, we're taking a look at that information and deciding whether or not that transaction should be paid or it should be invalid. And so uh, we're excited about a lot of those types of use cases. So do, do procurement teams need to hire different types of employees to get the most from these kind of solutions? Or does it, you know, are they having to retrain, upskill? Because uh, you hear a lot about skills gaps and it's usually related to technology. Um, I just wondered if, if, you know, there were any, uh, any if there was any friction on that front in terms of the, the, the skill profiles of procurement teams? No, no. In fact, Sean, I feel like this is a great opportunity for different procurement organizations to offer opportunity for the people that they have in their teams today to do more value added, you know, work. Because otherwise, they're sitting with Excel spreadsheets looking at reconciliation. They're sitting and trying to compare, hey, this transaction was done by this user for this stuff. They're, they're doing mundane work which goes away and now they can think about more strategic use cases, right? This is a great opportunity for, and, and speak, having spoken to thousands of Cooper customers where leading CPOs are looking at talent and looking at ability to grow their organizations. This is a great way to bring real value back to their own enterprises. This, this payment method brings value back. I have, I have talked to procurement teams who see this as an ability for them to showcase how much value they're bringing back to the enterprise, get a seat at that table where they are actually saying the platform that we've invested in pays for itself. The value that we are getting, we are giving an opportunity to our members, our people, our teams to grow in their careers as they now start looking at doing more strategic work in engaging with their supply chain, right? Thinking about you know, newer methods of payments that can bring value to them. And so it's it's really very synergistic. And I think a lot of Cooper customers embracing payments here are seeing this in that in that lens. Very valuable for our customers. Completely agree. And I see more and more a CFO, a chief procurement officer, and a CTO are coming together to make the decision around the platform as well as the financial products that are embedded into that platform. And we're seeing that more and more often in conversations with our clients on a regular basis. And what, what about take up of this technology and these solutions? How fast is this market growing? And, and are you seeing different regional take up, territory take up, uh, a, a certain sectors adopting it faster than other sectors? Be just interested to get an overview of of how things are progressing on that front. Yeah, so um, so as we think about the uh, countries that have a lot of check and cash in B2B payments, we're seeing a healthy uptick of the use of virtual card and then carded products in general. Uh, so as you think about the US market, we have a very sizable business in the US market and in the United Kingdom. Um, and more and more, what we're seeing is new use cases popping up across Asia, uh, Latin America, and uh, the Middle East and Africa. Um, you know, I would say a lot of those use cases are very specific to industry vertical uh, segments. And so, for instance, healthcare companies needing to be paid by insurance companies, we're seeing that pop up in, in Asia at the moment. Uh, education, another use case where uh, universities are leveraging a virtual card in order to be able to pay suppliers and also be able to pay um, any type of 
students who are through the program and need to be able to exchange funds. They're using those virtual card use cases in that as well. Um, and then in the commercial real estate space, we've seen use cases around commercial real estate where virtual cards are being used to be able to facilitate those B2B payments between the commercial real estate developer and then the suppliers that are actually on the job on a regular basis. Yeah, I think uh, I think totally agree with Chad. I think most of the similar observations, you know, a lot more customers switching to use them, uh, virtual cards versus the traditional plastic or procurement cards. Um, United States being our major market where you're seeing the growth, but you know, closely followed by UK, we are starting to see some progress in other European countries as well. So that's that's great to see. And and like we all said earlier, I think the the thing that's going to drive this even more, Sean, is the consumerization of this. I know we talk about this in the B2B payments world. This is a very great specific example, right? Bringing this kind of a digital payment instrument, bringing it into your digital wallets like Apple Pay and Google Pay, but with the control that a corporate wants is exactly what the, the future holds. I mean, you, you need to make it, you need to make it with the right, right level of controls, but at the same time, very useful and easy for end users to use. And, and, and that's the balance that we are able to strike with this. And I feel like we are all adopting it in our consumer personal world. We will see more and more of this adoption in our business world in the same way. And I, and I think that's really where I think some of the discussions that Chad and I have had, right? I mean, how to bring this to the travel space, straight through processing of transactions so that it's completely touchless, right? These are all the places where we are innovating more to give value to our end customers to get. But thank you very much, uh, gents. That's all we have time for now, I'm afraid. We have to move on to our next keynote. But I uh, really appreciate your time and your insight and your expertise. Uh, it, it's been a, a pleasure having you here. Thank you, Sean. Ciao. Thank you very much. Thank you yeah. very much. Take care.